Good morning, and welcome to Food for Thought. It's January the 15th, 2021. Beautiful Saturday morning. Glad you could join me for this uh, devotional broadcast. Um, today we're going to continue with some thoughts and reflections that I've had in the book of James. And uh, I pray that through the devotion today that you'd be encouraged and, and, and strengthened in your walk with Christ. So when we look into um, the next passage of Scripture here in James, James chapter 1, verses 9 to 11, um, we're confronted with the fact that James wants everybody to understand. Um, the truth is that in this life concerning wealth and possessions that we amass, um, positions that we uh, gain through promotion, those sort of things, you can't take it with you when it's your your time to go. And um, in these three verses in James, he speaks to the believers and, and he wants to remind the brethren to ensure that they have their priorities in living aligned uh, with the correct perspective. And uh, he writes, The brother in humble circumstances ought to take pride in his high position, but the one who is rich should take pride in his low position because he will pass away like a wildflower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant. Its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich man will fade away, even while he goes about his business. You know, there's just no guarantee when we're going to meet eternity. And, and James brings up the fact that some believers are going to be living here in low down on the socioeconomic scale uh, lifestyles and people will some people will be relatively poor and powerless when it comes to living in this life and, and he contrasts that with the person um, who is more wealthy uh, holding positions of worldly importance and power and this person has money and in the context of these verses um, James is talking to us still in the context of trials, um, saying that trials actually benefit both brother in humble circumstance and brother in rich circumstance. But the poor man, let's talk about him first, although he does not have much in the realm of this world, um, he can be rich in the Lord and, and lose nothing when he comes under extreme trial and what he has in this body is taken away from him. Um, the rich man, however, kind of like Job, um, could be tempted to place his trust in, in his great wealth and, and in the power of his position, the treasures of this world, rather than being rich in the Lord and then wind up losing everything that he has amassed in a blink of an eye. And the brother, who has very little in this life, can rejoice that he does not have the same temptation uh, to focus on the things of the world, as his brother does. When troubles and trials of this life come to him, he uh, has very little to focus on materially and can more easily release his grasp on things in this world and uh, turn his gaze towards Christ. And James says that this is a high position to have. Now, the rich brother on the other hand, has much temptation to focus on energies in places that would be better spent um, being focused on the kingdom of God and, and God's work. And, and this is a low position because when you have much to lose in the way of earthly possessions, uh, you're more easily tempted to focus on maintaining and building those possessions and those things or those positions. As much as it is appropriate for the lowly to rejoice when they are lifted up by God, so it is appropriate, but far more difficult for the high position people, the rich people in this world, to rejoice when they are brought to humiliation by trials. Therefore, they are in a low position. Uh, pursuing and trying to grab a hold of earthly wealth is deceptive. It's like trying to grasp water by closing your fist around it. 
um, it slips through your fingers and in the end you're left with nothing in hand. Um, new homes become old homes. New trucks become old trucks. New toys become old toys. A million dollars in your bank account accounts for nothing. When you die of a stress-induced heart attack or even if you die um, sipping uh, your beverage on a beach at a cost share or a timeshare in Costa Rica. The same thing happens to all men. We meet our maker and nothing that we gather in this world amounts to anything. So um, 1 Timothy 6, 9 tells us that those who want to get rich, however, it says, fall into temptation and become ensnared by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge men into ruin and, and destruction. Now, this lines up with the teaching of James, and that's why Jesus says to us in um, Matthew chapter 6, 19-21, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The trials serve to remind those who are rich in this life that although they are comfortable here, it is still only this life which fades as the grass grows brown and the flowers fade away. So if we put our life and identity into the things that fade away and spoil, we ourselves will fade away and spoil. How much better is it to put our life and our identity into things that will never fade. And um, if a man is only rich in this world when he dies, he leaves his riches to somebody else. But if a man is rich before God, when he dies, he goes to riches in heaven, riches beyond our wildest imagination, which are in a kingdom that will never fade away or spoil. So you can't take it with you when you go. So for those of us, and most of us in this land have been blessed with, uh, with much in this life. God calls us to be careful how we live. Not to focus our energies on the things that fade away and spoil. But let us be rich in good deeds. And use what we have for the kingdom of God and for his glory. This is pleasing to God. And this is food for thought.